which squat style is best? Uh, there's clearly the best one. And there's no doubt about it. And we should definitely argue about it. That's being a little sarcastic. Um, like so many things in exercise, sports, science, strength, conditioning, sports training, whatever it is, that's kind of a, in this realm of, for, of sports, fitness. Um, the, the answer is it depends. It really does. It's kind of a, it's, it, it's like a lot of things I see, you know, just in general is these simplistic questions that try to pin something, you know, with a simple answer. So I'm, you know, I have to be committed to the question. Like I have to commit to one of the squat styles. I don't, I can say it depends and I can escape the question <laughs> um, because it really does depend. And so let's talk about these three common squat cycle uh, styles. There are others, there are other exercises. Um, but what do you have in front of you is just a picture of a front squat. Now, you know, I don't think the argument typically is between front squatting and back squatting per se. It's more of, you know, low and high bar. And I say argument. I don't think it's like an intense argument, at least for most. It's just a question like which, you know, some people say this is better, this is better. Um, and so then you have your traditional low bar squat and then a high bar squat. Now, you know, it's in a front squat and I've, these are crudely drawn, of course, and I've tried to keep the dimensions the same. They're probably slightly different, um, but they're roughly the same length, you know, of torso and head, um, you know, the head size about the same, but, you know, thigh length here, shin and then foot. That's what you're looking at in my crudely drawn pictures. And so the front squat, you can see a much more upright posture. The bar is going to be behind the knee. It's more of a quad dominant exercise. I know there's some research to say it's the same as back squatting, but I don't particularly find those studies compelling, even though they're, well, they're interesting. I don't think they're conclusive about muscle activation and, you know, whether or not a front squat and a back squat are the same. Basic biomechanics tell us that they're not. Um, then you have, and I'll go over these 20 styles and why they may all be appropriate at different times. A low bar back squat is more of a powerlifting squat. And so you notice the hip is further away. The parallel is what we're interested in here. The hip is further away from the, the barbell where it'll be located. And because of the fact that we push the hip back a little bit more, maybe achieving a vertical shin, maybe just slightly forward, um, you know, the barbell, you're going to have to have a counterbalance here. And so the barbell is going to be low on the back in order to make sure, you know, if it was high bar, it'd fall over. And then in the traditional high bar squat or Olympic style weighting squat, the torso and the shin are roughly the same. They're running parallel to each other. It's a lower squat, so it's as low as you can go. Um, that you know, position of the barbell is roughly between the hip and the knee. So which one of these is better? And so that would be more of a, let me back up for a second, the, the, the low bar would be more of a hip dominant squat. Um, and then the high bar work would be more of quad and glute, even though the bar is closer to the glute, the depth of the exercise stretches those glute fibers much more. And so you get a lot more glute activation. Once you break parallel, the glute activation seems to increase. Um, and that's, a, you know, that's probably not a shocker. If you've ever hit, done some lower squats, you know, you can incorporate more glutes. Assu assuming that you're, again, we're making assumptions here that you're staying on your foot properly. You're not rolling on your front of your foot where your quads are going to come on, you know, those type of things. So which one is better? Well, number one. Which one is better is going to be dependent upon your mobility. So if you have really tight ankles or tight hips, okay, the high bar squat position may not be a, a lifting style that you ever achieve in terms of depth. Now, we could put an intermediate in here, which I like for most people, actually, uh, which is a parallel high bar squat. So, you know, it's more what I call it a sport squat. I just, that's a term I made up. It's just a generic back squat. It's neither a high bar back squat with the assumption of low positioning or, you know, what we call ADG or a high bar or a low bar position where we have, you know, more of a powerlifting style and more like a box squat. Um, something in between. That's probably where most people are going to fall because they do not have the mobility to do this style. I would even wager though, watching some people squat over the years that even a sports squat may not be back squat may, may not be appropriate because they don't have the ankle mobility. Again, the hips are too tight. Their technique isn't very good. They can't stabilize their trunk. Their lats are too tight and pick something. Mobility dictates your style. Number one, you may not even be on this, this continuum yet. And I would call this a continuum from here to here to here. Okay. In terms of styles and mastering each style, because the mobility challenges become more advanced as you get over to a high bar back squat. And things get a little scarier in terms of, you know, the, the punishment for making mistakes in terms of the injury likelihood um, gets a little bit more over here. And I say a little bit, a little bit is going to be subjective, of course, but I'm talking about if you get in these deep positions, 
it's easier to lose your spinal stability. Uh, if you have tight lats, you can start rolling through your back and create spinal flexion. That's what I'm getting at. You can also see knees start to cave in because we're too weak to get out of these positions and we're losing too much load. Again, just bad things, more bad things can happen in this squat than in these other two. At least that's my observation, okay? Um, front squatting then, let's go back. So let's say mobility, sorry. Mobility is number one. Number two would be your goals. What do you want to do with this? Are you an Olympic style weightlifter? Well, then front squatting and, and high bar back squatting are going to be your primary modes of doing things. So you better bring your mobility up, okay? If you are want to be a power lifter, then obviously a low bar is going to be important. It doesn't mean these other two won't be important to you. It doesn't mean that even an Olympic style weightlifter might not low bar for a stretch. It's probably going to be more of a good morning, but low bar ish, a variant. I would call the good morning a variant of low bar. Um, and so, you know, you might use all three at some point, but the point is that what are your goals? If you're just trying to get fit, build muscle mass, lose weight, this style here could fit your mobility a little bit better. But that sport squat I mentioned before probably is the, you know, the generic back squat is probably going to be your best squat. If you have the mobility to get the depth, going back to number one, mobility to get the depth, this exercise, the high bar, is going to give you far more muscle growth just because you stretch the muscles, you move them for, through a full range of motion much more than you would in especially the low bar style. Okay, so again, it depends on your goals. You have to ask yourself. If you're an athlete, and you're like, well, which one do I use for athletics? You might use, and if, assuming number one, mobility is in order, you could use all three in different times of your training cycle. Okay? You might use this one more for hypertrophy type of cycle. So general build, muscle building, strength building, more of that high bar. And then as you start to move into maybe higher velocity movements that are more hip dominant, and you're not trying to necessarily grow the legs as, as much, then a low bar might be more beneficial during the season. This one might be more beneficial uh, if you are frequently beat up. During the season, you might have pockets where you have 10 days off. You might do a high bar session to accumulate some volume to maintenance your muscle mass, at least as much as one session can do, and regain a little bit of that full range of motion strength, especially if you're an athlete where you are in full range of motion, like you're a soccer player or a football player or anything where you're going to have these knee and hip flexion angles that are quite significant. Probably a good idea to work these in, but there may be times you want to leave your body alone and not beat it up. And so some of these, you know, low bar style might be more beneficial. Okay. Not surprisingly, in strength conditioning, there's some debate about these two. Most, uh, that's not fair. My observation of those around me, okay, and that could change from, from school to school, is that many adopt the low bar style. It doesn't require as much right, uh, mobility, -ish, you know, uh, sufficient uh, mobility proficiency there we go um it's more glute dominant and that's a lot of times what we're interested in especially uh in like in, in many athletes and female athletes in particular i see this but it's also males is their quad dominant and so you know using a style that really forces the athlete to sit back and start to cue into their glutes which they maybe have never done before can be beneficial and again the glute max is a very important muscle when we talk about hip hyperextension hip extension hip hyperextension jumping and sprinting and so that you know that makes sense there's nothing wrong with that i wouldn't argue and say well we should be doing low high bar back squats for all athletes all the time well if you know your athletes are too stiff and you don't have the time perhaps you don't get to work with them all year round uh, you're not going to be able to sufficiently develop the mobility for a high bar squat then using a low bar makes a lot of sense, perhaps even box squatting and really working on hip velocity and movement quality as they come up out of the bottom of that squat. That's going to, for that athlete, it's going to generate um, a lot of, again, hip extension, which is going to be, you know, a nice transfer for them to their sport. And they may, not, some of these athletes may not get in these excessive flexion angles either. Okay. This is kind of like saying, I, I'm going to prepare for every situation, which is not a bad thing. This is saying, I'm going to really compromise some of that. Um, and maybe some of the situations they won't, you know, when they get into these, these excessive flexion angles, I'm not going to really worry about that. I'm just going to have them get stronger in the range of motion they can operate in the weight room. And that's probably a good start because remember what, what number one was mobility. What's your mobility issue? Okay. I like high bar, low bar, high bar, full squats. That doesn't mean that I can do that. In fact, I've worked with athletes. I've used none of these. In fact, we didn't use any bilateral squats, two leg squats. All we did was single leg work, split squats, because I had four weeks with them. They didn't know how to back squat. They don't have adequate mobility. We're going to work on those things those four weeks. But if they need to get stronger, I don't have time to put a bar on their back, and nor do I want to hurt them in the weight room. 
And so I'm gonna have them do something that's easier for them to learn and has a better transfer because of the time I have. They're a single leg athlete, they're, sp they're sprinting in their sport. We're gonna do split squats and that's all we're gonna do. Or we'll incorporate one of my favorite training tools which is a hex bar, which is a kind of a quasi squat, quasi deadlift. It's like a pause deadlift or a pause squat, right? You're starting from the bottom instead of the top. And so again, these are other tools. So there's obviously, again, it depends. There's other factors here, but what style is best? It depends on mobility, it depends on goals. Now, if assuming one is good and goals are that, hey, I'm gonna use all of them, what would be a, a really smart sequence? Learn how to front squat first, okay? One, it's if you need to bail, it's easier. You don't have a bar on your back. So you can just dump the bar forward. If you start to wilt like a little flower, right? Or get a little turtle back going and you lose your spinal position, it's not as devastating potentially for your body as if you lose it in a flexion angle with a bar on your back. Okay, now I do start people off on back squatting that are just beginning, but I'm always very cognizant, cognizant to say it's about range of motion. It's about what you can do properly and through that range of motion than it is about load. And so in an ideal world, I would love to have everybody front squat first. But if you've ever front squat, you know that that's very challenging. Your upper back can be weak. Your lats can be too tight. You can't rack the bar. Uh, very effectively and maybe you don't know how to squat so you're, you don't have good balance Again, this is all things that you know we're making assumptions if you start to front squat you know things are in order if any of those things are not you're gonna have a harder time front squatting and may even find you have an easier time back squatting because you don't have the upper back issue like you did when you front squat it in an ideal world i front squat first though you're going to build that upper back you're going to build that mobility of the lats you're going to build that sitting in and it's a safer squat position okay that's an ideal world. It doesn't mean that always happens. Then you'd move to low bar. And so you get to the bar on your back. You get to sit back and learn how to use your glutes. At least feel them, even though you're not to depth. And why do we do low bar, by the way? You notice the legs are parallel. It comes from powerlifting. The point of powerlifting is to win and lift the most weight. So you don't need to go low or don't. Uh, the lower you go, the harder it gets. <laughs> right? You can see that, you know, even though these things aren't perfectly drawn to, to scale, the head here is much lower than it is in a low bar. It's a, it's a low squat. Uh, and so you're going to have a harder time. Those muscles are going to be at a greater mechanical disadvantage at that low position because of their alignment of the sarcomeres and the myofibrils in them. Um, and so it's going to be a harder exercise. Okay? So a low bar, though, would be a great place to learn how to use your glutes like a box squat. I think it's fantastic. It also could be done with a high bar in concert if you could switch styles and feel comfortable with them, um, you know, more of a speed day, okay, working more in velocity. And again, most people either adopt one style or the other because there is some technical things that go along with each. But once you, you know, work with them for a bit, you can switch back and forth and still be somewhat proficient in both. And then our high bar here, you know, would be our final product if we were climbing the tree of, you know, progression. Um, I think the arguments about depth are silly in the sense of how, how low should we go? I just told you the things that limit that question. You know, there are things that should be considered when, you, when you're when you thinking about that question. Mobility, goals, and then progression, okay? And if you're not ready for any of these squat styles, you know, you start with a goblet squat. You know, Zercher has become popular, um, but I think a goblet squat is a great place to start, a bilateral goblet squat. And if you don't have time to do any of these things, unilateral or single leg work is fantastic. Obviously, there's some challenges with that. If you can't squat your body weight, you know, on both legs efficiently, you're not going to be able to do it on one. Uh, and so I'm not saying that's a perfect answer all the time either, but it may fit a scenario, like I mentioned before, with an athlete that may have limited amount of time or you're a runner and you don't know how to back squat or you need even just a little bit of time to leave your spine alone um, and just do something that's going to be less compressive, uh, directly applied through a barbell in your spine. It's not a bad activity. And I haven't taken into account all the specialty bars and everything else that's out there. I'm just talking about these three generic styles. Um, again, it depends. There's a lot of roads that lead to Rome, and I think some of them are fantastic that I didn't mention here. So I'm not advocating this. My thought process has to be yours, or it's the only way to think about it. If anything, walk away from this video and say each one of these styles are tools to be used. They're not necessarily rigid ways to do things, uh, and we can't consider other ways as being, uh, you know, as being less effective uh, because every situation can be different. Um, you know, I would imagine strength coaches would low bar back squat some people and high bar others if they had the ability to oversee those that could manage a high bar and those that, and just the want to, right? A lot of athletes just don't want to do a high bar because it's hard. Okay.
that's enough. That's 15 minutes. I figure I'm pushing it as it is. But I hope you found this, this beneficial. Um, at least maybe adjust your paradigm. You're thinking a little bit to say it's not about which one is better. It's about which one can I do and which one is appropriate for the goals I'm trying to accomplish. We could even periodize squat style if you wanted to. Um, you know, you can get as complex as you want with this, um, this information.